everybody and welcome to Excite Bike. Uh, this isn't necessarily a let's play or anything like that, rather than it's going to be more of a, I guess, history of type of series that I'm going with here. Only, uh, I don't really like to do scripted things all that much because it just sounds very awkward and very forced and unnatural. So, rather I got a whole bunch of notes here from said script that I made before and I'm just going to, uh, you know, kind of go with the flow and do like a natural gameplay video here while, you know, throwing out his stuff about the history of this game. So as you can tell, it's a like, Excite Bike was made in 1984, or November 30th, 1984 for uh, the Japanese version of Famicom. Or if you were in the States, then it came in October 18th, 1985. So actually that was quite a quite a wait, if anything. And of course, as you can see here, um, this game features uh, two modes. You have mode A and mode B. Differences being uh, mode A, as you can tell, we're just racing against the time. So, um, yeah, essentially you're just trying to get the best score possible. And, you know, if you do, then, uh, you know what, you're a pretty go cool person. Uh, of course, the controls to this game are pretty basic for the most part. Uh, a and B is uh, essentially the only buttons you really need to know. And as long as I'm uh, thinking correctly here, um, A is A button is just a normal acceleration. As you can see in the middle there, you have a temperature gauge. And if that fills up all the way, then you overheat your bike and you lose precious seconds. Now B is, um, you know, a faster mode of acceleration. The only drawback is that the temperature gauge does fill up a lot quicker, and you expose yourself to the possibility of overheating your bike. But it's very nice, I mean it comes in handy if you do try and do some of the later stages here. Of course we got this really um, cool looking challenge race, uh, you know, ending of the track st screen, you know. Makes you feel all good about yourself, beat the stage, and all that good stuff. But yeah, all you're doing is really trying to beat the best time, which uh, does show up in the background. So if you beat a minute and 24 seconds, then you get first place. I think if you get, I don't know, too far behind, like one of the lower ranks, then uh, you do, you do kind of, uh, it's game over essentially. It has a save and a load feature because you have the option to uh, design courses. And ideally you would be able to uh, create multiple layouts and save them. This was uh, definitely a reality for the Famicom uh, disk system. However, when it came to the Nintendo Entertainment System, we kind of got shafted there. Because we didn't have any, like, any uh, peripherals. Uh, which actually allow you to save. So the the save feature and the load feature actually are still present in this game, the instruction booklet. It uh, notes that they're there and you know in the event that in the future like a an accessory releases so you can actually save your progress then you know then the save feature would be available. But that was never really to be realized. And also, um, this game was made by uh, two uh, pretty big names in Nintendo, I would say, uh, including uh, Mr. Miyamoto. But uh, there was also another person as well, uh, Toshihiku Nakago. And they were two out of the three, I guess, Golden Triangle or the three uh, Golden Triangle, it was a title given to them because uh, they were responsible for releasing really huge hits such as uh, The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Brothers. And it's kind of interesting, the whole development process back in the day. Uh, for this game, for example, uh, pretty much Nakago and uh, Miyamoto, they pretty much frequented a um, hotel in Tokyo, because that's where one of the offices was for Nintendo at the time. I think the other one was based in Kyoto, but since it was in um, Tokyo, that meant they had to do a lot of um, traveling back and forth, and 
because this was the start of the bubble economy in Japan, it meant hotels were very hard to come by. So often, more often than not, they would be staying in an office together, or not an office, a hotel room, and sharing a bed sometimes also. So uh, very interesting times, I'm sure, for the whole uh, for the crew there. But it's like uh, during that whole time, there was a lot of games in development. I mean, it was a time. This game, when it came out, it was before, you know, when you had uh, Super Mario Brothers, as we uh, know and love today. Rather, the only games that featured Mario at the time was, strangely enough, Wrecking Crew, which was um, definitely a game I kind of forget about when it comes to games that have Mario in it. And then aside from that, you had Mario Brothers that featured, you know, Mario, Luigi. And, you know, I'm sure we've all played at one time in our lives where you're pretty much in a sewer. Or at least I'd like to think it was a sewer. And you just killed mo enemies as they came out of the sewer pipes. And, yeah, you just kind of survived and got the best score possible. And, uh, Excite Bike, for the most part, uh, it left quite a legacy, I would say. Um, this whole, you know, screen scrolling that we see here, I guess we could call it screen scrolling technology, because it, it was pretty um, huge back in the day, because everything was new. And just don't mind me as I reset this so we can kind of uh, change gears for a second. So now uh, let's just go back here and we're going to do now let's show off design mode quickly. I mean, they were kind of uh, lenient in which they gave you a reset button. But aside from that, you have uh, design mode. And once you get to certain points, you can choose A through S. And it gives you different obstacles to choose from. And then whenever you want to uh, move up a little bit, you just press the A button. And then you just uh, design to your heart's desire, really. And then, uh, oh, and I just cleared it by accident, but that's that's completely fine. No one's gonna mind. So yeah, there we go. So this is the design mode, just in a nutshell. And when you hit end, it gives you the little finish line. And the cool thing is you can play mode A or mode B, because this was only a single player game at the time. Um, there wouldn't be a multiplayer version released until 19, 1988, I think, in which uh, the we had, what, the Nintendo... No, it was actually released in the arcades. So, uh, yeah, so it was only available in the arcades, and then in 1988, I believe, it was released for the Super Famicom Disk System. All right, not, no, just the Famicom Disk System. My bad. So when that came out, you could play multiplayer, but unfortunately for us in the States, if you uh, had the NES, then you would just be playing by yourself. That's okay, because in Selection B, or Mode B, this is where you actually play against opponents. And I always thought this was pretty cool, I just thought they had pretty cool, like, costumes. Even though the one all the way in the top, the bluish one, was pretty much a cookie cutter of uh, my guy. And pretty much uh, the only real threat here is that if you hit them from behind, then you're going to crash and then a whole lot of bad stuff happens. But you can trip up your opponents by uh, kind of cutting in front of them at the last second. So that way they'll end up hitting, crashing into you and then you kind of screw them over. Just like uh, this. But these people can get really devious though, so you gotta watch out. But yeah, that's kind of the whole difference between um, Mode A and Mode B in a nutshell, is that you have computer opponents that you're racing against, and you have to get at least 8 seconds ahead from the person who's in 3rd place to get 1st place in a race. So yes, uh, kind of going back into um, you know the kind of legacy that this game left behind. The fact that we have this scroll, uh, screen scrolling technology here kind of played a big role in terms of um, the development of Super Mario Brothers. Because otherwise, you know, Mario Brothers before then 
was just you were stuck in a single room and you were taking care of challenges as they came to you. But in Super Mario Brothers, you actually had a, you know, this, a scrolling screen. So you actually had more of a world to explore and it was full of a lot more enemies and bosses that you even encountered. So it actually helped a lot in terms of the story telling things of it. And also another uh, kind of impact that this would have, or at least it would influence the decisions, were the idea of having Yoshi created. I mean, it was a long time dream back then to have Mario writing like a... some kind of compa companion in um, the Mario games, but a uh, lousy jerk. But um, be due to like system constraints and everything, it was never possible to have like a something that Mario could ride on. And this very idea came from the fact that as the Excite Biker, you're riding on a motorcycle. And, you know, something like that was just, they were looking into uh, incorporating into the Mario series, but never was able to, unfortunately. Not until the Super NES. Hmm. I always thought it was very interesting that we were not able to actually save any tracks until much later. This is like way ahead when you had Excite Bike release for the Game Boy Advance system under the uh, NES Classic series. When uh, you know they released many of the classics that we knew from back in the day for the Game Boy Advance, which was actually a really cool series. But um, the only drawback was you could save at, at the most just one track. But then you would actually get to make full use out of it when uh, the Wii Store, uh, the Wii Store actually came out. So the Virtual Store. Um, when you bought the game there, then you were able to actually use the Wii's internal memory to uh, save as many tracks as you want. So definitely a huge plus, but you know that's. That is a heck of a long time to wait just to be able to do something like that. And at that time, we have many other games already released, such as uh, Excite Bike 64, and then you had also one that never released in the States, but it released in Japan only. It was called, uh, what was the name of the game? Okay, so it was just called the BS Excite Bike Boon Boon Mario Stadium very interesting and fun name, I would say, but, um, yeah, the only difference is it kind of featured a whole bunch of Mario, um, characters, such as Mario, Luigi, Toad, Princess Peach, and, uh, Yoshi and Wario, and this actually released in four versions, so it depended, well, depending on which version you had, it would feature a different cast of characters. Uh, Luigi was ultimately removed from the roster in the last version, and Mario Yoshi was added, so I guess, I don't know, I guess that was too much green for the cast, I don't know, I guess one green thing or green character is enough. Kind of, it's kind of like uh, Mario Kart in a way, you think about it, the only differences that you would have in that game as opposed to this is that... Uh, you collected coins, much like you would in Mario Kart, and it increases your top speed. And if you collected enough coins, you actually got into a super mode, which meant you um, had unlimited... Well, you can press the B button, essentially, or the faster acceleration as long as you wanted, without um, the temperature actually rising. So I think we'll just cut to that quickly. And I'll show off some gameplay there, and then uh, we'll kind of finish off the episode with that. So uh, just give me one second. Alright, so we are back now, and this is BS Excite Bike Mario's Boon Boon Mario Stadium. It's got a long name to it, but um, this is definitely uh, the Mario version of Excite Bike. And it released in 1997, only seen in Japan, and this is the uh, fourth edition. And let's uh, kind of go forward here. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like in a nutshell. I'm just going to speed things up a little bit so we can get to the character select screen. So this is just uh, showing you everything that's going on here. So we have a cast of five guys here, as you can see. Got... Uh, 
We got Toad, we got Wario, and I got selected that by... Well, had no choice, but this is what it looks like. It gives you a little bit of a preview screen before you actually go into race. Not a bad touch, but um, yeah, let's kind of uh, speed on through this. And from when I've played this, it always seems like it gives you... You know, you have like a mode A and mode B in Excite Bike. Well, it kind of starts you off with mode A first, and I guess maybe to help you get used to the game. But um, here's what, what I was talking about earlier with the coins, picking them up. You collect enough of them, and I think that in this case it was five coins. If you pick up that many, then uh, you kind of can just press the B button as much as you want, or the acceleration for well, the faster acceleration. And you don't have to worry about your temperature gauge flying off the, flying off the roof, essentially. Um, the only thing you have to really worry about is if you fall down, then you lose your super power-up, and then you have to collect the coins again. But um, also remember, the coins does uh, serve as another purpose in which it increases your top speed. So, you know, you want to pay mind to that as well. But yeah, this game looks a lot more colorful than what we saw before, but that's a given when, you know, this was released for a different console, as opposed to what was uh, released, well, what Excitebike was released for. Um, this one was released for the Satella view, and that was kind of like a, with uh, the Super Nintendo, yeah, the Super Famicom, but with some, uh, I guess, additions to it think I would probably go over the, what the Satella view is in maybe more detail in another video. Just uh, so I can get some more research done on that. And then afterwards, once you uh, get past this kind of stage, you get to actually race against other characters. So close one. And there we go. Kind of uh, just went a little too fast here, but it happens. But in this time, this time we actually have opponents. So as you can see, we have a uh, rotten little Koopas there. But if you can get if you can get enough coins, then this isn't going to be too bad. All right, so here we go. Maybe we make some more progress and actually see some of the other characters that you know we're racing against here. We're supposed to be racing against. Uh, it's just a uh, rotten little Koopa, so. Yeah, I have no idea where these people are going to be. But yeah, I think, if anything, I'll probably end the episode here for this uh, I don't know, new experimental series of mine. The history of Excitebike. So thank you for watching, and I will see you for the next episode. Should I come up with another idea for this, of uh, what to cover. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Ciao.